So today I'm going to be brewing a milk chocolate stout. I've got my strike water heating up. Got to get to 170. That way I can mash in at 154 because my mash tun temp is at 72 and so is my grain temp. So 170 will put me right at 154. And while that's heating up, I am going to crush my grain in my handy Monster Mill MM3. It's a great mill. So I'll show you the uh, crush when I'm done. But I've got 29 pounds of grain doing a uh, 10 gallon batch, actually more like a 12 gallon so I can fill up, have 10 gallons by the time everything's said and done. So, so I'm right at 170. So I'll kill the flame. I got my grain crushed. That monster mill just does a really nice job. So now I'll get ready to mash in. But first we will take the water from the hot liquor tank and come out down into the three-way valve, which I have oriented to go up. And then we'll come up through into the mash tun. Step back so you can see the circuitry. So there we go. So we got all mashed in. Stirring it to make sure there's no dough balls. And it smells good. mash pedal just works great too. You can see it just flowing through there. So like I said, I had 29.5 pounds of grain, I think. And ended up having to put in 9.5 gallons. My, uh, Hot liquor tank is only 10 gallons, so I've got to fill it twice. Need to upgrade that and get a bigger one, but. So, wanted to hit 154, and we're flirting back and forth between 155 and 154. So, I'll stop, cover it up, and uh, let her sit for an hour, and then I'll recirculate the mash for about 15 minutes, and good so i figured i'd show you guys all what i have for my uh chocolate so i'm doing a 10 gallon batch i'm going to split it and on half of it i'm going to do chocolate so these uh cocoa nibs i've had soaking in vodka for probably oh gosh eight months so they've really extracted that chocolate flavor out nicely and then this on Facebook, I buy vanilla beans from the Vanilla Bean Co-op, but I've got a pile of vanilla beans in here, and I've been making this vanilla extract since, I guess, the February of last year. So this is probably, oh, obviously do the math, it's old, but the vanilla on it. Let's see if I can get it open here.
Mmm, that vanilla smells super good. Yeah, you can see all the beans in there. So I've got that one going. And then I've got another one that I started. I'll show you that one. This one, which is completely full of beans. I don't even know how many I used, but I used oh, quite a few. But that one I started on September 1st last year. So I've got a ton of vanilla extract to make some good beer out of. So we've got the uh, sparge water right where it needs to be. So we'll cut the flame on that. And we've got recirculation going in the mash. Set the grain bed a little bit and kind of clear the wort up. So basically what I'm doing is I'm coming out of the mash tun down through the three-way valve up through the pump and then back up into the mash tun so you can see the orientation on the pump here And while that was mashing in, I got my fermenter all cleaned out with star sand. So it is good to go. One thing I would say, if it's a sunny day and you have a sight glass on there, just make sure that you, when you're transferring it in there, keep it in the shade. Cause that sun, boy, it can really skunk beer fast. I had that happen once, so um, just FYI. But otherwise, it's going good. It's a beautiful day out here in Montana. So, okay, so now we're transferring out of the mash tun down through the pump, up, over, and into the boil kettle. So the boil kettle is filling. at a rate that is equal to the amount of water coming in and sparging down over top of the grain bed. So usually you can watch the sight glasses as long as they're even, uh, that works. I usually don't do that. I usually just pay attention to the top and make sure I have about an inch and a half of water, two inches over top of the grain bed. And I just keep my eye on that while I'm filling my boil kettle. So, and I don't need to turn the pump on usually until to fill the boil kettle until the water starts getting up a little bit or the wort starts getting up oh, about the same height as the uh, water in the mash tun. Otherwise it flows pretty good. So, all right, on to the next. So we're getting close to the end of the boil. Right now I'm sitting at about original gravity of 1.076, probably finish at 1.080, I'm guessing. And uh, we'll transfer it, but first I'm going to cool it down. So we're gonna come out of the boil kettle, down into the chiller. And then from the chiller, we're gonna go back up and through the pump back up and over into the boil kettle so we're just going to recirculate it kind of do a whirlpool but we're going to go through the uh, chiller first to try to get it cooled down and then we'll put it in the fermenter even the ducks and chickens like spent grain
just get right up in there, I guess. So we're cooling it down and pumping it into the fermenter. And we've got about going in at about oh, 72 degrees. And then I'll just crash down a little bit more in my chiller. Before I pitched the yeast, I wanted to get it like 63. So, there we go. Got just a little bit left in the kettle. So, on to the next. Okay, so I got the fermenter down to 62 degrees. So now I will take, got my valve open, and I'll take my oxygen tank comes down and goes right into the uh, fermenter and I'll turn it this way Let's see it better. Crank her on. And we'll hit it with fifteen pounds for a little bit here. Pitched my yeast. I've been liking dry yeast lately, so I did two packets of SO4. But that's the way I'll oxygenate the wort. And that carb stone from Spike is pretty sweet, also. I call chiller up running over into my into the chiller I made my lines. I borrowed my buddy my long hose so I gotta put it up on a bucket so it reaches until I get that hose back. I got my kegerator. So I got six beers on tap. It'll hold nine in it. Yeah. 